And um, Bible reading, my thoughts are this, that Bible reading, make it a habit. Make it a habit of reading the Bible. <clears throat> we read in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, a very well-known scripture. If you have your Bible, if you don't know it, turn to it. Just relate it with John 3.16 and 1 Timothy, uh, sorry, 2 Timothy 3.16. 2 Timothy 3.16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for report, reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. The first part is what I want you to um, dwell upon. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God. In other words, it's God breathed. God breathed into men. Thoughts inspired them to write what he wanted them to write without any error. <clears throat> Why did he do that? It's profitable for doctrine. <clears throat> All kinds of teachings about our spiritual life, about future, about upon this earth. For reproof, correcting people. And for instruction in righteousness. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this word that we have before us. We thank you, Lord, that you've given us this written word, written living word that has given us life, that has told us that you love us. And that, Lord, we are able to, to live a life that is pleasing to you because of the word, because of the Bible. Help us today, Lord, to have a better understanding and value the Bible more and more. Grant it, O God Almighty, in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, uh, one of the presidents of America, John Quincy Adam, he was the sixth president of uh, USA. And uh, this is what he said about the Bible. I'm, I'm just reading in quotes. So great is my veneration for the Bible that the earlier my children begin to read it, the more confident will be my hope that they will prove useful citizens of their country and respectable members of the society. I have for many years made it a practice to read through the Bible once every year. And that's the statement, quotation from uh, one of the presidents, the sixth president of USA, Quincy Adams. Something to think about. And I wish all the presidents and leaders of countries would, do, would have the same thought. He valued the word of God so much. He allowed his children to read from his early childhood and hoping, expecting that they, his children will become good citizens of the country and also at the same time they will be good and respectable members of the society. And then he goes on to make this statement that I have made a habit of reading through the Bible once every year. A habit of reading the Bible once through every year. So this is why I want to speak today about the habit of reading the Bible. This is a habit of reading the Bible through every year. There are a lot of people who practice that, a lot of people who go through it, and uh, they make an effort to read through the Bible every year. And there are many people today, they are doing it. There were people, great people, presidents and others in different countries, they did it. But there are some people who are doing it today too. But you know, I fear that uh, if we really do a survey, if we really get to know the truth, we will find that there are few and few people who have developed the reading of the Word of God daily. In fact, you might find that some people have never read the Old Testament even once. Maybe some people have not even read the New Testament at least once. I think this is a very serious matter. This is why I have taken this today to talk a little bit about 
making a habit of reading the word of God at least one year, once in a year. We want to encourage every person to develop a habit of reading the Bible once in a year. And to do this, I have just some thoughts about the word of God that I feel will help us to value the word of God more and more. Now when I say word of God, I mean the Bible, all right? That's the word of God. This is the word of God for us. And I'm talking about that. Now, first of all, I want us to know that because of the power of God's word to save, this is why it is important to read it. God's word saves. You read that in James 1.21 where it says, Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. It's the word, that is the Bible, that directs us and brings us to a place where we can be saved. Saved from hell. And this is, happens by producing faith in us. The word of God produces faith. When we believe, then things begin to happen. In Romans chapter 10 verse 17 we read, So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing uh, by the word of God. I want you to know that without faith it is impossible to please God. And without faith you cannot be saved. So you see, someone somewhere sometime must have spoken to you about the about God through the Bible by either reading the Bible, you somebody witnessed to you, or you are sitting in a, in, a, in a service like this where you heard the preaching of the word and by hearing the word of God that your faith increased. And without faith, it is not possible to please God. So when faith comes, then you begin to think about it. The, the word of God tells you that this is the way to go into it and you uh, accept that. Without faith, you cannot be saved. So how do we get this faith? Faith comes by hearing the word of God, by reading the word of God. And this is why it is so very important. The word of God was written so it produces faith in us. But it will not do it unless we read it. We need to read the word of God and it will produce the saving faith. The Bible is very clear on that one. That if you believe that Jesus died on the cross and he rose again from the dead, you will be saved. You will be saved. There is no two way about it. So it's the word of God that tells us that Jesus came, that Jesus is the son of God, that he died on the cross, that he rose again from the dead. And when this fact is presented to us, when we hear the word of God through the word of God, and then we begin to believe. And God does some wonderful things in us that we are born again. So the word saves us by causing us to be born again. Now new birth is a very important part. We have the teachings of new birth by Jesus Christ in chapter 3 of John. That's where he uh, brought that up. He said that it is important for a person to be born again. If you're not born again, born again simply means a completely new birth, a spiritual birth. And this happens by faith in God when we accept it. And um, when we hear the word of God, somebody witnesses to us or a preaching like this, then you find that the word comes to you and you believe. And once when you accept Jesus Christ, when you confess your sins and you accept him and you, you accept him as your savior, you will find that he will save you, completely wash all your sins away, and you will become a born again, a new creation. And this is the most important thing. The Bible says that anyone who is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Very clearly the scripture says that the word of God gives us new birth by faith in the word. It gives us new birth. And then our life is completely changed. And I want us to know this as believers sitting over here, that we are born again. That means we are changed. Our life is changed. It's not the same as it was before. It's not the same before uh, we came to Christ. 
Whatever there was before, whatever habits we had at that time, whatever practices we had is already gone and we are born again, not with corruptible seed, but with incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. That's in First Peter. So we find that this is the thing. We need to understand that our life is completely changed and that is because of the rebirth. He doesn't do a patch up work. In our lives. When you believe in Jesus Christ, the word, you hear the word, you believe it, and it completely changes you. Completely changes you, gives you new life. Jesus emphasized the importance of new birth. He emphasized this by that you must be born again. And that birth comes by faith in Jesus Christ. And then he goes on to say in First Peter that it's not the corruptible, incorruptible. Uh, receive, we did not receive the incorruptible seed, but the word of God, in particular the gospel, when we receive the gospel. So we find that the word of God is so very important. It is something that uh, will give us life. It gives us life. And that is why I emphasize today. Because it is the word of God, we need to have a, make a habit of reading it. If you don't read it, then you don't have that strong faith. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. And if you don't read it, if you don't hear it, you don't participate in a meeting like this, then your faith does not increase. But by reading the word of God, you become more and more like Jesus. More and more your life is changed, your character is changed. And particularly, you know, we as, as uh, Indian people, we come, you know, we, we come from a different uh, religious background. Uh, many of us and some of you may be born in a Christian family, but most come from a uh, different religious background. And so we find that it is very important for us to know what is the Christian way of life. Because it is different from the other religion that we have, whether it's Hinduism, Islam or whatever it is. Their style of life, their teaching of life is completely different. So when you get saved, you are in a new life, you are born again, you are a new person. And you need to know what is it that I need to do in this new life that I have after bo being born again. And that is found in the scriptures. And if you don't read it regularly, if you don't make a habit of reading it, you won't know it. You won't know it. And um, your life will not show the fruit of being born again. And then he saves us from the past life, he saves us from the consequences of sins, and it all happens through the word of God, by putting our faith in the word of God. In uh, Acts chapter 20 verse 32 we read, And now, brethren, I commend you in God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all of them which are sanctified. In other words, we keep us being saved. It's the word of God that keeps us being saved. If you don't feed in the word of God, your spiritual life will die. And it's important for us to make a habit of reading the word of God. Paul frequently spoke about this. He spoke to the Corinthians, he spoke to Timothy, he spoke to them about various things, but most important of all, he emphasized the importance of reading the word of God. When a person does not read the word of God, lack of reading the word of God, lack of uh, knowledge of the word of God, then it destroys. Lack of the knowledge of the word of God destroys people. And this is what happens to believers today. If you don't read the word of God, it, you are spiritually dying. You don't have that strength, the spiritual strength. Just like physically, if you don't eat food, you will be very weak physically. So, so, in like manner, we need the spiritual strength. And this word is the thing that will give us the strength. The word of God is all powerful. People have tried to destroy it. People have tried to get rid of it. They have denounced it. They have made fun of it. They do all kinds of things, but you'll find that the word of God still remains today because it is the word of God. And God has assured us this is an ever-living word of God. This is um, something, 
It's an incorruptible seed. It will not die away. It will remain. People, as I said, people have tried to do all kinds of things to get rid of the Bible, but they have not. The Bible is the best um, read book in the world today. The largest number printed every year. And I told you about that incident even this morning. Uh, I mentioned this, that how this um, wealthy uh, atheist many, many uh, hundred years ago, he announced that the Bible will not last another hundred years. But you know, God is a very, um, I say that very humorous. He does things that, are, uh, that uh, makes us to start thinking about what's happening. We find that um, when this man died, the Bible Society bought his property. And millions of Bibles were published from that very house where he had announced that Bible will not last a hundred years. That is how God works. And in spite of that, even through the history you'll find, there are a lot of people who denounce the word of God. But this is the word of God. This is the living word of God. And we need to pay attention to this. We need to take time out to read it and read it so that we get spiritually strong. And this is the living word of God. And Paul emphasized on this, the importance of, especially when he talked about the Old Testament, you know, in the book of Romans, you find that in Corinthians, he talks about it. He talked about it to Timothy, about the importance of paying attention to the word of God, reading it and uh, taking heed to the word of God. And so we find that it is important. Even today, it is important. If we don't read it, we will die spiritually. But it, the word of God will survive all the time, doesn't matter what happens. We have to remember, this is not just an ordinary book. This is the word of God, given to us, miraculously, inspired by God. People, holy people wrote that as God inspired them. And we still have it today, and it brings about result. It says in um, uh, Romans 15, 4, For whatsoever things were written aforetimes were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. You see, the power of God's word gives us comfort. We are comforted through the reading of the word of God. We are comforted because we have hope. The scriptures give us hope for future. We, we, we are not uh, living, uh, we don't know what's going to happen, uh, but um, after death, what's going to happen? The scriptures very clearly tells us, gives us hope. That after death, there is life. There is life. Jesus assured us that he will come back and take us to a place where he is so we can be in the same place. So we find that this gives us hope. It gives us hope. And we are comforted through that. When our families, when uh, loved ones die, we are comforted by that because we know that that person believed in Jesus and there is, a, uh, there is opportunity for us to meet that person again uh, in, uh, after death. So, the word of God, knowing the word of God is so very important. People don't realize the importance of reading the word of God. So it is important that we read the word of God to know what God wants from us. What he has for us. It is so very important. It uh, provides assurance for our hope because it tells how God always keeps his promise. One of the things we must remember that God has promised us a lot of things. In the scriptures there are full of promises. And these promises are for sure. And when you read the word of God you will be assured that God keeps his promise. We have hope in that. There is an assurance, there is a hope that God will keep his promise, always will keep his promise. You know, sometimes we, we don't realize this, but there are some things that we have to do. God has promised so many things for us, but there are, in the promises there is always some condition. You, you do this and I will do this. God says that, God speaks about it. This is my promise to you, but you need to do this. And it, how do we know that? What are the conditions that God will pro fulfill his promise? You'll only find it when you read the word of God. So this is why this morning I'm trying to take very brief, briefly over here to indicate to you, develop a habit of reading the word of God. We make all kinds of habit. We get in the habit of doing all kinds of things. But one of the most important habits that you can develop is reading the word of God. 
The word of God gives us comfort and it gives us happiness. There is joy, there is happiness. In some we read, but his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Who is that? The blessed is the person. Blessed is the person who delights in the law of the Lord. And he, he meditates upon it day and night. Thinking about the word of God. Reading the word of God. You've made a habit of reading. And you practice it. And you meditate upon it. And you listen to the word of God preached. You think about it. And when that you do that, you find there is happiness. There is joy. There is nourishment for your spiritual life. You grow and you grow and you grow. This happiness comes by engaging in daily Bible reading. Daily Bible reading. This is spiritual joy, spiritual happiness. Day and night, you are blessed because of your reading the Word of God, because you meditate upon the Word of God, because you think upon the Word of God. So it makes you very happy and you rejoice in it. There is um, comfort in the Word of God. There is peace and comfort. And this comes by, this inner peace comes because of our faith and conviction and knowledge of the word of God. We don't stumble because we are in the word of God. The word of God is a solid foundation. It will never change. It remains the same all the time. The fashion changes. What the world teaches, it changes different, different style of life, uh, you know, the, the style of living changes, everything changes. But the word of God for over 2,000 years remains the same, more than 2,000 years when you go to the Old Testament. It's still the same. It does not change. It's stable. We can rely upon it. We can dwell upon it. And this is why we need to develop a habit of daily reading the word of God. It will tell us what to do and what not to do. It is so important to do this. We, uh, <clears throat> we, make, we, we get in the habit of doing other things. You know, because we are creatures of habit. We do things because, you know, there are some things we start doing it and it becomes a habit and we keep doing it. Whether it is good habit or bad habit, but there is a, some kind of thing that we, we develop, a habit. And um, we live accordingly. There are so many things that you do just without thinking you do it. It's, it's part of your life. I said, uh, you know, you, those who are driving, you drive a car. You don't go and sit and think there now I'm going to change this gear or that thing. Or I'm going to speed the, press this accelerator or brake or whatever it is. It, it's, a, it's a habit. It comes naturally to you. You do it. And you go on there. And sometimes we don't realize how much it takes control of us. We, you know, we drive. I, I drive from home and come here to Belau Drive. But sometimes someone says, hey, let's go to Balelebu. And I come here and I still drive into Belau Drive. Why? Because force of habit. You make that turn every time and you want to do it again. Until you realize you're in the wrong. So there are habits that we develop. But how wonderful it will be if we develop the habit of reading the word of God every day. Reading the word of God. That will bring inner peace. It will, uh, it will not cause us to stumble because it's solid foundation. It remains firm. You put your faith in the word of God. What it says, do it. You'll find that it will remain the same. Everything else in the world will change. The Bible is the unchanging word of God in this changing world. Bible is the unchanging word of God in this changing world. Everything will change, everything will go away, but the word of God will remain. So there is value in God's word. And I want to stress this reason to you, to develop a habit of reading the word of God. We develop all kinds of habit, as I said, if we, don't, if we don't develop a good habit of daily Bible reading, then you know what we are doing? We are developing a bad habit. And you know what's a bad habit? Not reading the word of God. 
So develop a good habit of reading the word of God every day. Make a habit of it. If you don't, then you are developing a bad habit of not reading the word of God. Let, is, let that not be said of you. Let it be said that you have a good habit of reading the word of God. And um, there are many people who have done that and they get in the habit of reading and they read and they read and they read the word of God. And they get enriched spiritually, they get blessed spiritually. You know, we are, we, are, um, we are all creatures of time. We are limited by time and space. Each one of us, we, we have so much time. We occupy so much space. Um, we can't do more than that. We cannot occupy more space than that. We are limited by that. So what, what, why I'm saying that is this, that James tells us in James chapter 4 that our, our time upon this earth is very brief. It's just like smoke, vapor. It's there for a moment and then it vanishes. It's finished. Our life, our time here upon this earth is very limited. We don't know when we're going to die. We don't know what's going to happen. Now then think about it. Last year, did you develop a habit of reading the word of God? Did you read the word of God? Uh, Old Testament or New Testament? Or any one particular book of the Bible? If you have done, not done it, then you know it's a wasted time. It's time that's gone. It will never be able to, you will never be able to get it. It's important that we develop a habit of reading the word of God. It will bless us. And I, uh, I just um, uh, want to mention about Annie. She, she's, got a, she's got a wonderful habit of reading the word of God. Every December, 30th of December, she'll tell me, finish reading the word of God. I finished reading the Bible. And she reads that every day. She's got a certain way of doing it. A certain time. And you know what? It's, it's getting on to the to Adiel and Ashriel. During these holidays when she's reading that, those two, they come and sit with her, even though they cannot read some of it, but they, they are there. They are developing a habit. They are developing a habit to read that. Habit is something that we, we form, and we need to be very careful, particularly parents with the children, what are you teaching them? And that habit that they will get when they are young, it will stay with them. It will stay with them. And uh, you'll be amazed what these children can learn. Those two are learning from her. Who is learning from you? Is there someone in your family watching you, reading the word of God, or doing something else that will, uh, that will help them to develop a habit? You know, I, I mentioned this morning, I had an interesting talk with uh, Adiel one day, you know, and he was picking his nose. And I, I told him, hey, don't do that. That's dirty. And he said, I saw you doing it too. <laughs> he must have seen me sometime. I said, I saw you doing it too. See, he was developing habit. Then I told him, I said, listen, next time when you go in the shower, you go and clean your nose in the shower. So a few days later, he came back to me and he said, you know, I clean my nose in the shower. <laughs> Developing a habit, whatever the habit is, good or bad. When you come to the word of God, there is a good habit of reading the word of God. If you don't read it, then you are developing a bad habit of not reading the word of God. So which one would you choose? Read the word of God. It is so very important. Time will pass away. Time will pass away. And if you have not read the word of God upon which your salvation depends. What a tragedy that is. You haven't made a habit of reading the word of God. Each one of us must make a habit of reading the word of God. And this is what I want to do today, very briefly, to encourage you to read the word of God. That is why, if you see in our bulletin, every week we, we put there, every week we put a Bible reading, and if anyone follows this, you will read through the Bible in one year. There in the second page. Make sure you get a bulletin. And there it says there on the 10th of January, you read Genesis 25 to 26 and Matthew 9, 1 to 17. That's today. Why don't you make a decision 
I'll take this and I'll read the word of God according to this pattern. If not, you want to get another calendar of reading the word of God in one year, you come to me, I'll give you some that. But we are putting this there for your benefit. Make sure you take this uh, bulletin with you. Keep it in your Bible and follow that. And next Sunday when you come, you'll be given another one. And make a, develop a habit of reading the Bible. Reading the Bible through the year. And you'll find that it will do you some wonderful things. You know, the, uh, one of the excuses that we always get from people is uh, why they don't read the Bible. They say, well, I don't understand what the Bible says. <clears throat> I just don't understand it. That's why I can't read it. You know the story I told you about that uh, uh, it's a Chinese uh, story that the grandfather was out in the yard and he was trying to encourage his uh, son to, to read the Bible and he kept on saying that I don't understand it. So there was a bamboo basket lying in the mud. He told his son to take that basket out from the mud and go to the river and get me some water. So he went there and tried to bring the water, but you know, the bamboo basket doesn't hold any water. Came back to his father and says, I can't do it. His father said, no, go again. Bring me some water in the bamboo basket. He went again, two times, three times. He came back and he threw the basket in front of his father. He says, cannot be done. I can't bring water in this bamboo basket. It all drips up. He said, son, he says, I know that. But look at the basket. He looked at the basket. Do you see any difference? He said, yes, it's all clean. He couldn't bring the water, but the bamboo basket had become clean. That's what the word of God does to us. You may not understand everything, but read it anyway. It will do something to you. You don't remember everything that we preach from here. Everything that I preach here from this Sunday, Sunday after Sunday. In midweeks I preach. Maybe you'll never remember that. But remember one thing. It's doing something in your life. Just like I said before, that what you ate yesterday, how many of you remember what you ate yesterday or a week ago? Do you remember what you ate? Can you tell me what you had for breakfast, what for lunch and dinner? Most probably some may be able to tell, others may not. But you see, whatever you ate, whatever food you ate, it did something to your physical body. That's why you are grown up today and sitting here. If you hadn't eaten, you would have gone very weak. You probably wouldn't be sitting here. You'd be sick. The same thing is with the word of God. Same thing applies there. It's your spiritual food. You have to do it even if you don't understand it. Read it anyway. Ask the Holy Spirit as you sit to read. Always pray. Say, Spirit, illuminate my mind. Holy Spirit, come. I'm reading this word of God. Help me to understand this what I am reading, and you will find that God will reveal to you some wonderful things there if you can only make a habit of reading. This is important. We make all kinds of habit. We do this and we do that. Something comes naturally to us. Let that be with the Bible reading also. Let it come naturally to you. This is your time to read the word of God. Get it and read it until you finish. Another year is beginning now. We make many resolutions. We're going to do this or that. We'll do, you know, achieve this. But let number one resolution be daily Bible reading. That should be one of the top resolutions in your list. So that when we come to the end of the year, you'll be able to say, hey, I finished reading the Bible. Just like my wife says to me, every 31st December, when she finishes that, I finished reading the Bible. I think maybe there was once or twice she didn't finish it, but most of the time... It's 31st of December, I finished reading the Bible. Can you do that? I challenge you to do that. I challenge you to read that Bible so that it becomes part of you. I challenge you to read the Bible so that it becomes a habit that that particular time I will read. Either morning, evening, or whatever time it might be, I will read and read and read until I get to know what the Lord wants from me. Because if you don't read the Word of God, he will not speak to you. He speaks to you through his word, guides you, directs your path, leads you. And above all, it's the word of God that gives us salvation. So this morning, just very briefly, I'm trying to encourage you to read the word of God. Because if you don't read the word of God, you will die a spiritual death. This is the word of God. Someone has said that the word will keep you away from sin. And sin will keep you away from the word. 
it's a powerful thing remember and uh, many many miracles have happened through the word of god and you know the story i told you about one of our ladies over here in this church who didn't want to have anything to do with the bible or scriptures but then i encouraged her i said what about you just read the book of john as a story book i gave her the book of john and i said just read it as a story book don't think about jesus or religious thing or anything but read it read this book and she promised me she will read that and a week later her life was completely changed the word of god changed the word of god is powerful it will change your life make a habit of reading do the good habit and develop a good habit of reading the word of god don't develop a bad habit of not reading the word of god would you stand with me now please